Attention please, a fire has been reported on the third floor. Fire! Fire! Warnings such as these may be the only indication that there is a fire in your building. How you respond will affect your chance of surviving a real fire. People behave in a variety of ways when they become aware of an alarm. They may think that it's another false alarm or test. They may wait for further information. They may go and investigate. They may seek friends or colleagues. They may stop whatever they are doing and leave via the nearest available exit. In almost all circumstances, only that last action should be undertaken. Fire and smoke can spread rapidly, particularly when fire doors are defective or wedged open, and it is vital that people respond correctly. All buildings must have fire action notices at strategic locations. These give an outline of what people should do. Details of the fire action card for this building will be given after the presentation. When a fire is discovered. If a fire is discovered, the first action must be to raise the alarm. In most cases, this will be achieved by moving towards an exit and operating the fire alarm call point. These are the red break glass boxes. All doors should be closed to contain the fire and smoke. Unless the fire is small, it is recommended that firefighting is not attempted. Use of firefighting equipment. This should only be attempted if the fire is small. The alarm has been raised, the individual is confident in the selection and use of equipment, and they are in a position to escape if the fire gets out of control. The successful use of equipment will depend on its selection and the nature of the fire. The firefighting equipment provided in this building will be that deemed to be most suitable for the risks involved. The colour coding of extinguishers has changed in recent years to meet EU requirements for standardisation throughout Europe. Extinguishers having the older colour code do not require replacement until the end of their service life. The identification, selection and use of extinguishers will now be discussed. Water extinguishers. These are normally the largest extinguishers in a building and are coloured red. They will normally be found on exit routes adjacent to fire doors and in multi-storey buildings should be in similar locations on all floors. Water extinguishers may be used on solid fuels, for example wood, paper, plastics and furniture. They must not be used on burning fats or oils, live electrical equipment or metal fires. The pin should be withdrawn from the extinguisher. The tag, shown here in green, has not been broken and this gives an indication that the extinguisher has not been tampered with. Before approaching the fire, the extinguisher should be tested by squeezing the trigger to determine if it is operating correctly. This will also give an idea of the distance that firefighting can commence. The jet or spray should be directed at the base of the flames and kept moving across the area of the fire. Hot spots should be sought out after the main fire is out. CO2 extinguishers. These can either have a black body or a red body with a black panel. They will normally be found adjacent to electrical equipment. These extinguishers are safe and clean to use on live electrical equipment. Fumes can be harmful to users in confined spaces. The area should be ventilated as soon as the fire has been extinguished. The pin should be withdrawn and the extinguisher tested for correct operation. Care should be taken not to touch the discharge horn, which may become extremely cold during operation. The discharging gas should be kept moving across the area of the fire. Carbon dioxide has a limited cooling effect and care should be taken to ensure that the fire does not leave me. Care should be taken to ensure that burning contents are not dispersed due to the high pressure of the gas.
dry powder extinguishers. These can either have a blue body or a red body with a blue panel. This type of extinguisher may be found in almost all locations. Dry powder extinguishers may be used on most types of fire. They are particularly suitable for use on small liquid fires and electrical fires, although the powder does not readily penetrate spaces inside the equipment. Dry powder can be particularly messy, and normally carbon dioxide is used for electrical fires. The pin should be withdrawn and the extinguisher tested for correct operation. The discharge nozzle should be directed at the base of the flames and with a rapid sweeping motion the flame should be driven towards the far edge until the flames are out. The trigger should be released to allow the air to clear. If flames reappear, the procedure should be repeated. Foam extinguishers. These can either have a cream body or a red body with a cream panel. Foam extinguishers are likely to be found where there is a risk of a flammable liquid fire or spillage. They can also be used on solid fuel fires such as paper, wood, textiles and fabric. They should never be used on electrical fires. The pin should be pulled in the correct manner and the extinguisher tested for correct operation. Foam extinguishers form a film on the surface of burning liquids. They have a cooling action with a wider extinguishing application than water on solid combustible materials. On flammable liquid fires, the jet should not be aimed directly onto the liquid. Where the liquid on fire is in a container, the jet should be directed at the far edge of the container or on a nearby surface above the burning liquid. The foam should be allowed to build up so that it flows across the liquid. On solid fuel fires, they should be used like water extinguishers. Fire blankets. Blankets may be housed in rigid metal or rigid plastic boxes or soft pouches. They are normally fixed at eye level adjacent to cookers. They are suitable for small fires involving burning liquids and for extinguishing burning clothing. The blanket should be placed carefully over the fire with the hand shielded. You have to actually pat it down with your hands. We leave a wee bit of space with the air coming into the flat. It'll actually Care should be taken that the flames are not wafted towards the user or bystanders. Hose reels. Hose reels may be enclosed in a cabinet or exposed. They are normally located adjacent to the end of escape corridors or occasionally within stairwells. Hose reels must not be used unless the user has received specific training. They are suitable for solid fuel fires, including paper, wood, textiles and fabric. They must not be used where there is a risk of electric shock. Hose reels in most buildings are of the manual type, where it is necessary to turn a control valve anti-clockwise. Automatic reels will operate when the hose is withdrawn by a few metres. The hose should then be withdrawn and the nozzle turned anti-clockwise to the open position. The jet should be aimed at the base of the flames and kept moving across the area of the fire. Leaving the building. Escape routes must not be compromised by the use of corridors and stairwells as storage areas. This not only increases the possibility of fire in these areas, but reduces the escape route width. All exit route doors must be free from fastenings. In some exceptional circumstances, exit doors may need to be locked when the building is not in use. However, the fire policy for the building should include for the unlocking of doors at all other times. Visitors should be made aware of the fire policy of the building. Staff should direct visitors to exits as required. In most circumstances, disabled people will be able with or without assistance to exit the building. In some circumstances, for example some high-rise buildings, it may be necessary to find a refuge and wait assistance. Such refuge areas will be designated in the building's fire policy. All doors in the building, and particularly doors to the room containing the fire and along escape routes, should, wherever possible, be closed to minimise the spread of fire and smoke. All staff should report to the designated assembly point to ensure that there are no missing persons. <laughs>